Welcome to War Thunder Naval. I am Commander Tyrael, and this is the JDS Yuguri, a Fletcher class destroyer loaned to the Japanese in the 1950s and converted for use as an anti submarine warfare and training ship. The most notable difference between this ship and a standard Fletcher is the removal of the sea turret and all torpedo tubes. While this reduces the overall firepower and killing potential of the vessel, DD-184 is still a very potent vessel at 4.3 and offers Japanese players a chance to diversify their destroyer playstyle. Today I'll show you how to use intelligent threat assessment, target prioritization and tactical maneuvering to overwhelm and confound a superior enemy. Lessons that can be applied to any high speed vessel with decent agility and fast firing main guns. Approach the enemy undercover, separate from the main fleet. Positions so that all enemies are on one side. Select a target based on the highest threat to your ship, in this case a Sumner, as it has 20% more firepower than the Fletcher. Note you should never attack the lead ship in a formation as this will attract attention. Once you have a comfortable firing solution, it's time to let loose. Fire the main guns. You want to ensure to pour fire onto the target until their main components are crippled. In this case, I'm aiming for his main guns. The Sumner has four 5-inch guns that it can retaliate with. Once the main guns are hit and on fire, I shift targets to try and hit the crew modules and bring his crew levels down to an unsustainable number. My guns have a first stage ammo rack that let me put out fire at 22 rounds per minute for the first minute. Turning my attention to the lead Russian ship, I turn in towards the cover to block the view of his allies and spoil his firing solution. Turning bow in, I alternate fire between the first and second main guns. This gives me a rate of fire of one shell every two seconds. This rate of fire means that he's unable to repair the ship. Aiming high to take out the main guns, he's now defenseless. This is called breaking fire when AP rounds pass through all components of the ship, doing maximum damage. A technique that dates back to the age of sail. Helpless, I am free to finish him off. And one down. turn out to face the rest of the column. I'm not concerned about any PT boats or coastals, my Beauforts will take them. The next highest threat is this Russian destroyer. Its semi-armor piercing rounds can make short work of a Fletcher, so I need to cripple him while he's stationary. As the cover increases, I shift my focus to his ally because it has a better firing solution. My AI gunners make short work of the LCS. While this Brissenden has smaller guns, his fire rate is about equal to mine and he can set up pretty bad fires so I need to take him down. Being in such an exposed broadside position, he doesn't have much chance. Turning into your enemy's fire allows you to Angle your ship, increase the time on target, and spoil their lead. I notice the entire fleet convoy ahead. If I go out there now, it'll be dangerous. My ready racks are empty and my fire rate slowed down, so I need to turn away from the battle. The key to success with this playstyle is to know when to be aggressive and know when to retreat. And now is such a time. When you turn away, always drop smoke. Allow your guns time to switch sides, reload the ready racks and acquire a new firing solution. Target priority number one, again a Russian destroyer. Keeping in mind that all of these enemies are advancing at me at full steam, so I need to drop the shots in front of them. 
The enemy formation is in a perfect column. And I am across the top of the column. This is called crossing the T. Another naval tactic that dates back to the age of sail. It allows you to put fire on every single unit in the convoy. Again, targeting the most dangerous ship, in this case a Fletcher. Aiming low to try and hit his ammo racks. Always aim behind a turning ship. There she blows. Shifting to the next most dangerous target, this Russian destroyer. One of my earlier targets has sunk against the island. Try and get as much fire onto them before they hit cover. And when they do, shift to the next most effective target. In this case, another exposed Russian destroyer. Hit his engines to slow his down, then try and hit the ammo racks. Semi-armor piercing rounds cause three types of damage. Hull component and fire damage. The latter is especially dangerous when inside the ship. If you're able to set a fire in an engine room or in an ammo rack, the ship will die very quickly. One thing you should never do when captaining a destroyer is sit still. A still ship is a dead ship. And we ourselves are starting to take critical damage the crew is reaching critical levels, and it's time to retreat. One excellent defensive maneuver that you can pull is called the Serpentine Maneuver. Pull hard starboard and then hard port, or vice versa. When coupled with a full reverse, this allows you to dump nearly all of your speed and increase your turning circle dramatically in preparation for a smoke drop. So retreating from the main area of combat, my goal now is to isolate any stragglers and maintain security of the cap zones. The Fletcher has an excellent acceleration and so I'm back at top speed and heading away from the main combat. When targeting a stationary ship, remember that you need to lead the shots. If traveling at full speed, the rule of thumb is 15 degrees ahead or behind the target, depending on the direction of travel. If you remember this rule of thumb, your first shots will always be true shots. Taking fire, we turn in again and away. Just make sure to always watch where you're heading. It's embarrassing when you hit those islands at full steam. No one likes a stranded seal. With these final shots, the mopping up operation is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this little lesson from Destroyer School. I am Commander Tyrael. Until the next transmission, stay vigilant.